Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Eric Holloway for February 4th, 2020. You have a couple options to get an additional forecast if you want to research anything further. We have a 1-800 number that you can sift through a menu system. We also have uh, online presence with weather.gov slash Alaska. You can also do slash Fairbanks slash Anchorage slash Juno to help refine your search specific to your area. Lastly, if you have any questions or want to talk about the weather, please email us at the email listed there at the bottom of the page. For hazardous weather, we're going to be looking at uh, winter storm warnings for Upper Koyukuk Valley there near Bettles and that area with uh, that ends 6 p.m. this evening, about an additional two to three inches in that area. Also, we have winter storm warnings out for St. Lawrence Island and Bering Strait communities for until 6 a.m. Wednesday. Winds increasing to 60 miles per hour with blowing and drifting snow in that area. Wind chills could reach also minus 50 in that, that region. We also have winter chill advisories out for the Chukchi Sea coast till mid-Thursday with wind chills reaching 30 to 50 below in that area. And not to fit, forget about Kaktovik, there's a winter storm advisory out for that area for additional snowfall uh, reaching advisory criteria. As we'll see here in the satellite uh, picture, lots of clouds uh, associated with uh, various weather systems, but um, you can see the overall patterns from the southwest, which will help increase the temperatures across the state. Otherwise, uh, mixed precipitation from snow across much of the interior, rain and snow as you get into the Gulf Coastal areas, and even um, we'll see this low pressure system in motion heading towards the Panhandle, bringing some uh, rain and snow showers in that area, also rain and snow in Kodiak and even the eastern Kenai Peninsula, but otherwise uh, scattered snow showers across much of the eastern interior. Today's weather consists of a stationary front stretching out from the Bering Sea up through the YK Delta and into the eastern interior, just south of the Brooks Range, scattered snow showers through the YK Delta, up through the um, Koikok River Valley, and also we have some rain and snow showers through the Bristol Bay region and into the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians, and we'll see this nice low pressure system way out there in Aleutians approach uh, that area, and then it'll be shifting slowly eastward with time. But not to get uh, too far ahead of ourselves, we're going to be looking at uh, this system moving on shore as well towards the northeast Gulf Coast, but right now looking at some rain and mixed precipitation there in Kodiak Island, otherwise a occluded front stretching out there in, nor in the northeast Gulf Coast, bringing some rain showers and snow showers a little bit further inland. For tonight's weather, again, that stationary front will be with us for a day or so as it uh, hangs in there. We're going to be seeing scattered snow showers along that boundary through the uh, Koyukuk River Valley, out through the YK Delta and into the Bering Sea. Also, snow showers associated with troughs moving into the southwest with uh, 984 millibar low analyzed there. Otherwise, we'll bring continued rain showers uh, through tonight for Kodiak Island. And again, there's that 978 millibar no low now showing up near the central and western Aleutians. And for the northeast Gulf Coast, we'll see that 989 millibar low bringing some scattered snow showers uh, across uh, the coastal mountains there 
along the northeast Gulf Coast and even the Alaska Range will see some snow showers, but otherwise rainfall moving in uh, through the Panhandle and mixed precipitation for a little bit further inland. For Wednesday's weather, we're going to be looking at, um, again, that stationary boundary uh, hanging in there with the 991 uh, millibar low there near the YK Delta, scattered snow showers through Bristol Bay and through much of that area but otherwise snow showers in the portions of the Alaska Peninsula. There's that low, now a 984 millibar low, bringing scattered snow showers and rain through that area um, of the uh, uh, Lucians. And then for the south central and uh, southeast, looking at uh, scattered snow showers across much of the region, at rain showers at the lower elevations, and then mixed precipitation uh, lining much of the uh, coastal mountains, and then as you get further inland, snow showers in that area, but otherwise. Uh, for Thursday weather, we're going to be looking at that uh, stationary boundary finally moving, uh, associated with that low that moves up the chain, 990 millibar low there, but otherwise scattered snow showers across much of the western interior, and then a little more um, consistent snowfall through the eastern interior down through uh, southeast interior and, and along the Gulf Coast. And um, even rain and mixed precipitation uh, along the lower elevations of the Panhandle with snow showers further inland. And there's another low going to be showing up uh, approaching the Aleutians, the 985 millibar low um, in occluded front. For low temperatures, Wednesday morning looking at minus 30s across much of the north slope even a minus 27 at Kaktovik Point Hope at minus 23, Kotzebue minus 18, Nome minus 10, Shishmaref minus 18, um, Yukiavik minus 34. Looks like uh, Fort Yukon is going to get a minus 4 and uh, minus 20s across much of the southwest, YK Delta uh, 14 there at uh, St. Mary's or Yamanic. And then um, even in Anchorage, uh, 20s, 21 there, Talkeetna 20, uh, Kodiak 30, and 30s through much of, in tw upper 20s through much of the Alaska Peninsula and Aleutians. And for the Northeast Gulf Coast, looking at 30s, uh, there at uh, Yakutat, Haynes, Skagway 32, 38 in Ke uh, Ketchikan, but for Wednesday afternoon, doesn't warm up a whole lot along the north slope with uh, 30s, minus 30s there along the north slope, packed over at minus 22, um, Shishmaris 17 up to minus 3 there at Nome, and uh, Fairbanks 14, uh, Eagles 16, 20s through much of the uh, southwest, even 30s showing up here in south central with um, Kenai, Soldana, 32, 40, showing up there at Kodiak, 30s through the Alaska Peninsula, and even down through the chain, and 38 in Cordova, and uh, 40s showing up there across much of the south, southeast. For Thursday morning, uh, looks like lows get down to minus 40 there near um, Trudeau Bay, otherwise Zukiavik's minus 32, um, Kotzebue minus 24, minus 22 in Nome, minus 4 in Emonic slash St. Mary's, and 17 in Anchorage, otherwise 20s through Bristol Bay area, and 30s through the Aleutians and rest of the Alaska Peninsula, 27 there in Kodiak, and then uh, 30s and even a 40 there at Sitka, 36 in Haines, Skagway. 33 in Yakutat. For high temperatures Wednesday afternoon, looking at uh, 20s, minus 20s, and even a minus 32 there, but otherwise Point Hope, minus 20, minus 16 in Nome. Uh, looks like Eagle's going to come in at 16. Minus 30s through much of the southwest and Bristol Bay region, and 30s, uh, upper 30s across the Alaska Peninsula Aleutians, and even 30 there in Anchorage, and looks like we're going to have the panhandle showing up in the 40s. This has been Eric Holloway with National Weather Service. And now, 
Aviation Weather Around Alaska. Welcome back to the Aviation Forecast. Let's take a look at the flying weather for Wednesday morning. Along a stationary boundary, we'll see IFR conditions over much of the western mainland and into the northwest, northeast part of the state, down through the southwest portion of the state and along the coastal areas and into southeast. Otherwise, we've got a nice low pressure system moving into the Aleutians will bring IFR conditions there. And again, that boundary on Wednesday afternoon remains in place with our IFR conditions out in the western interior, down through the southwest, more isolated IFR conditions across the coastal areas and into the panhandle and marginal across much of the area and down through the Aleutians. And for Thursday, Thursday morning, looking again, that boundary remains intact. Uh, IFR conditions along that boundary, otherwise marginal conditions, otherwise uh, across the Alaska Peninsula, Aleutians, and the coastal areas. We also continue IFR conditions along the coastal mountains in the southeast and the northern part of the Panhandle. For Thursday afternoon, IFR conditions a little bit less extensive, uh, marginal conditions uh, over much of the southern mainland and into the southeast with uh, even IFR conditions along the north slope. For the past conditions for the Brooks Range, both Anaktuvik and Adigan IFR conditions. For the southern Alaska Range, we're going to go for IFR early, marginal later in the day. And rainy in most of these passes in the Alaska Range will be mar marginal VFR. Windy, Isabel, Mentasta, Tanita, and then down in there in Portage, we're going to be looking at IFR conditions there for the passes in the Panhandle, Chilkoot and Wet, White Pass, IFR conditions there. For the freezing level, I'm going to switch over here. We're going to be looking at uh, elevated freezing levels there with 4,000 feet of the southern Panhandle, 2,000 feet over the much of the rest of the Panhandle. The surface conditions slides out along the coastal mountains and into the northern Gulf, down through the Kenai Peninsula there and out through the Alaska Peninsula into the Bering Sea. For icing, I uh, went for isolated moderate across much of the southern mainland and down through the Aleutians and into the Panhandle. I went for considerable moderate in some areas there in southeast with pretty good moisture above 5,000 feet there. Otherwise in the southwest above 7,000 feet and down along the Aleutians and western portions of the Alaska Peninsula above 5,000 feet. For the jet stream, looking at a pretty good jet coming across just south of the Kamchatka Peninsula, 180 knot winds there. Otherwise, when you get into the uh, western Pacific, 110, 110 to 100 as you get into the Gulf Coast, Gulf of Alaska. Otherwise, north slope, 50 knot winds there. And for 9,000 foot winds, we're going to be a low pressure system along the north coast, otherwise 10 to 15 knots around that low or along the west coast as you get in towards the uh, U.S. Canadian border, 20 to 25 knots there, otherwise down in the southeast, 30 to 40 knots from the southwest, and down through the Aleutians, looking at a low pressure system there with 10 knots around the backside uh, and then on the bottom of that low, 40 to 50 knots there. For 3,000 foot winds, Low pressure system out there in the Lucians, 30 to 35 knots around the backside of that. Otherwise, southwesterly flow across the southwest and into the interior with 10 to 15 knots in that area. Otherwise, the panhandle, 10 to 20 knots from the southwest on Wednesday. For turbulence, we're going to be looking at uh, across the eastern, extreme eastern Seward Peninsula and St. Lawrence Island. I put in a little bit of isolated moderate below 2,000 feet out that way. Otherwise, in Bristol Bay, we're going to be looking at uh, below 4,000 feet in that area and down through the Aleutians and the um, rest of the Alaska Peninsula below 3,000 feet. Otherwise, in south, the southeast panhandle, below 3,000 feet. They're in the southern part of the panhandle and a small area there near Cordova, just outside of the Copper River Basin. This has been Eric Holloway with the National Weather Service.
Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining us again, talking about the augmented reality sandbox, is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. And he's actually talking about a project from EPSCOR, which is the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. A lot of acronyms, but some really mm -hmm. fun stuff today, right, Eric? You bet. We've got a learning tool that is a tool that's fun to use, uh -huh. and it really has a, a relevance to actually daily lives of anyone who goes outside uh -huh. and sees uh, lumpy topography in Alaska. We've got yes. a lot of mountains and such. You know, when I was younger and go on your first hike in the hills, say, yeah. you're given, maybe you're in the Boy Scouts, or, or you get at the kiosk at, a, at the trailhead, a topographic map, a flat piece of paper yes. with all these lines on it, bullseyes, uh, long lines that curve back mm -hmm. on themselves, say, perhaps things that look like this. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a quadrangle or a topographic map. We've got here just to illustrate a couple of examples near Denali. Alaska okay. has so much Perfect topography, example. so many mountains. Yeah. And what are all these lines that we see? It can be tough mm -hmm. to know what this means the oh, first yeah. time you look at it. What we've got, all these lines represent lines of where the, uh, the elevation of the topography goes through a certain level above sea level, say. Mm -hmm. that This line represents where the mountains have gone from below 1,000 feet mean sea level up through a thousand feet and above. That's your thousand foot contour. And when the mountain keeps going up, mm -hmm. you're up to 1,200 feet, 1,400 feet, and so on. And that's how you get this little bullseye around, uh, around the peak of a mountain. Kind of makes layered slices, right? Kind of like layered slices. Okay. Nice way yeah. to look yeah. at that. And when you see those, the lines are closer together, you're, you're going up more steeply. Okay. If the mountain rises more slowly, it takes you longer in horizontal space to go through those different vertical increments. So that is that, really hard to visualize. Right. We're, imagine you're looking at a 2D piece of paper, two-dimensional yeah. piece of paper, but you're trying to understand what the three-dimensional world looks yeah. like. Yeah. Well, enter you know, the augmented help. reality I like it. sandbox. Okay. Yes, what is that? Yeah. It is right here. We have the sandbox with us today, Sandbox 2.0, portable version. Sweet. Built up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. And we've got a couple of folks helping out today. Yeah, uh, let's see, Alana Velaji, and she's a uh, mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. If you want to give us a thumbs up there, Alana, thanks for helping us out today. And Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator from EPSCOR, also helping us out today. Thanks, Courtney. And this tool here has a Microsoft Connect um, to sense the level of sand in this sandbox, oh, wow. and then the yeah. Connect feeds its information into a computer that then sends a signal to a projector okay. to draw the appropriate topographic lines on this topography. The fun thing about this, as we can see here, wow, that. is that the sandbox and its Connect and its projector, they all work as a team. Hmm. So here we've got a mountain in the middle of the, of the uh, sandbox. What if we uh, took down the mountain to some degree Watch as the, uh, the software responds and redraws the topography. Mm, kind of a caldera forming there. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's fun about the sandbox, too, is it knows that uh, gravity flows downhill. Okay. And we've got some water that's actually down in the lowest elevations. And what's happening now is we're making it rain a little bit. We'll fill up rain oh, wow. into that uh, elevated lake bed, that caldera, as you uh -huh. said. And so now water is pooled up there. And if, what if you gouged out an outlet uh -oh. channel? Glacial dam release. There you go. The water flows out. What we're seeing here is a tool mm. that allows people to touch and connect, uh, Microsoft Connect, right. RRR, yeah. um, to connect two-dimensional topographic maps like what we have here, these flat things on a piece, wow. on a piece of paper, to the real three-dimensional world. I mm -hmm. think this sandbox, it's sandbox's real particular application as a learning tool to young people is what does a two-dimensional map mean when it's trying to represent the three-dimensional world? Right. This sandbox is kind of both at once. It's actually three-dimensional, uh -huh. a lumpy topography there, the sand, but it's got these lines drawn on the three-dimensional sand that would be on a two-dimensional right. piece right. of paper. Wow, that, I mean, that, that is a huge leap from the learning that we experienced when we were younger to how, mm -hmm. how children and even adults are visualizing in, in these new forms of technology it allows that to kind of reshape their thinking and visualize this in a, in a very useful and absolutely hands-on way. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a hands-on tool. And it's hard for me to sit here and not go play with that. <laughs> well, that's what happened at GINA, um, up at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, when the first model was being made, the prototype with right. plywood and such, we had professional adult 
<laughs> professor types had heard about this and they yeah. came by because they wanted to see how it worked. Okay. And, and everyone becomes uh, that idealistic, wonder-filled youngster. Sure. And, and you, you just can't help but play with that and to see how it reacts in time and, and um, right. it, it's a dynamic learning tool. And it Dynamic. responds. That's exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. And you know, you wonder okay. what applicabilities beyond a teaching right. tool for Where topography it can it have? You can see how in Alaska we have inundation mapping is an okay. issue. If you had water coastal slosh, mm -hmm. slosh inland, say in a coastal flooding event right. on the western coast of Alaska or mm -hmm. the Arctic coast, you could see this. The concept is illustrated here um, as an introductory learning method. I think this is a potentially good outreach tool for all of us in Alaska. Okay, so not only just a topographical sense, a, a mapping sense, maybe something that leads into understanding of how geographic information systems work with GIS, but mm -hmm. also geology, if we wanted to get into kind of the formations and the bigger land masses and, and the representation of the 2D map, uh, we could go into hydrology, uh, which is uh, very important in Alaska, of course. Um, and even just understanding the weather sense, mounding up a big pile of sand could be that Arctic high pressure system sitting on top of Fairbanks and the voids mm -hmm. would be low pressure systems. This can go a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Wow. It's uh, not just landforms, but pressure has contours of high pressure and low pressure. And I wish I had had this kind of a learning tool no when I was taking kidding. Meteorology 101 back 25 years oh, ago. Wow. It would have been helpful, I think. Probably would have gotten a better grade. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming by, Eric and Alana and Courtney. Thank you so much for your help there in the sandbox. We are going to play in the sandbox a little bit more coming up tomorrow on our next edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We hope you join us for that. In the meantime, make sure you go to alaska.edu slash E-P-S-C-O-R. That's alaska.edu. EPSCOR to learn more information about what we're doing with this augmented reality sandbox around Alaska. We'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to the marine forecast. Let's take a look at the sea ice analysis today. You can see that uh, slowly increasing ice pack down the western side of the St. Lawrence Island. Otherwise, we're going to be seeing a decrease in ice pack coming up the, from this side of the uh, Bering Sea. This should be opening up some areas. You can see we analyzed uh, lower concentrations of ice there in Bristol Bay. For Wednesday's marine forecast for southeast, looking at winds generally from the south, at 20 to 25 knots across much of the inside waters. Outside waters looks like we're going to be up around small craft advisories there. East, westerly from 30 knots, seas as high as 18 feet. Otherwise, the northeast Gulf Coast is going to be seeing winds generally from the southwest of 15 or 25 knots with seas as high as 15 to 16 feet. For Thursday's mean forecast for southeast, winds again inside waters generally from the southerly direction at 15 knots. Otherwise, outside waters, winds generally from the west at 20 to 25 knots. Otherwise, the southern part of that will be down to the 15 knot range. For Wednesday's forecast, south central, winds in Prince William Sound, northeasterly at 20 knots. Otherwise, uh, southerly direction there as you get towards the north Gulf Coast, 30 knots there. Otherwise, winds generally from the west at 25 knots, seas as high as 11 feet. Cook Inlet, we're going to be looking at winds generally from the north, 15, 10 to 15 knots, uh, even seas as high as low as 3 feet there in the uh, Kamishak Bay region. For Thursday, winds generally from the southwest, uh, even in Prince William Sound, 10 knots there, otherwise 20 to 25 knots, seas as high as 11 feet as you get towards the north Gulf Coast, otherwise Cook Inlet, up on the north side of that, uh, winds generally from the east of 15. Otherwise, the southern and central part of that Cook Inlet region was going to be suddenly at 20 knots. For Alaska Potenza, Kodiak Island, uh, Wednesday, looking at winds generally around Kodiak Island from the southwest of 25 knots. South side of the Alaska Peninsula, westerly at 30 knots. Also, uh, southwesterly there at 25 knots on the north side of the Peninsula and Bristol Bay, southwest at 25 as well. For Thursday, around Kodiak Island, winds generally from the south or southeast there, 
and Shokoff Strait, uh, 20 to 35 knots in that area, seas as high as 16 feet. South side of the peninsula, seas from the southwest of 30, seas as high as 15 feet. North side of the peninsula, looking at south, easterly at 25 knots, Bristol Bay, easterly at 20 knots. Lucian Chain, looking at, let's see here, looking at winds generally from the south at 30 knots, seas as high as 13 to 14 feet over here, but otherwise, um, generally from a northerly direction, 20 to 30 knots, seas as high as 22 feet there, you know, Kirska and Shimia, seas as high as 19 feet out that way. For Thursday, winds generally from an easterly or westerly direction over most of the region, 20 to 30 knots, seas as high as 23 feet there near Nikolsky. And for the west coast, looking at uh, winds generally from the north, 25 to 35 knots along the pack ice, other on, all the way near the edge. Uh, winds generally from the northeast at 35 knots, St. Paul, St. George area, Pribs, westerly 25 knots. Thursday, winds continue out of the north, 15 to 25 knots. Even along the, pa the edge of the pack ice, winds generally from the northeast at 30, with seas as high as 10 feet. For the Arctic coast, Wednesday, winds generally out of the north, 10 knots along the, uh, the, just off the coast there, otherwise down through the Bering Strait, northeast, northwest Gulf Coast, northeast coast, normally at 15 to 30 knots, and then through the Bering Strait, normally at 35 knots. And for Thursday, a continued normally 10 knots, just off the coast there, otherwise northwest coast, uh, normally at 15 knots, and even 25 knots as you get through the strait. For tonight's weather, stationary front through, uh, stretching from the Bering Sea up through the eastern interior with scattered snow showers across much of the western interior, and there's that nice low pressure system, 978 millibar low. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.